Right, I'm going to run over a few bits and pieces with the Pulsar Krypton unit. A couple of people have asked us some questions and I'm just going to give you a quick overview of my uh, my opinion on a few things and an overview of the unit. So this is the Pulsar Krypton. It's the uh, Pulsar's first unit with a 12 micron 640 by 480 sensor. Uh, BEA sensor. Uh, Envision Trigicon uses sensor in the States. And also Pulsar use it themselves in the Thermion XG line, which isn't available elsewhere apart from the United States. Like I say, it's a 640 by 480 12 micron unit. Um, really good image quality on it. And hopefully in the future, they introduce that sort of sensor and other products over here. <clears throat> but as it is, this is the only one that's available to us with this sensor. So the unit itself, if you compare it to like a core, which is slightly longer, uh, an older style front mounted thermal device it's shorter it's more compact it's got a better battery system it's got an ips 7 or 14 runs long run time weaver rail on the side usb port on the side um 50 mil lens it's got all the usual pulsar functions uh hd recording with sound stream vision different color palettes different gain modes rocks identify forest all them features are built in with the usual pulsar software Apart from the menu system now is in a circular format because it's a front mounted unit that is how you access it and it gives you the best view because sometimes even though these units are like a one times unit don't let that deceive you um, the corners can be clipped depending on scope magnification so base magnification so that allows you to see the full menu picture so that is the, the unit I'm not going to go into it too much but <clears throat> it's a really good unit better than what I thought it would be um, and I'll go into a bit more stuff actually later, should I say, because there's a few more details I need to put in. So, PSP50 adapter that's installed on it. This is a different adapter what Pulsar is used normally. Um, you get a 56 and a smaller one as well. Each kit comes with different shims. There are all these different shims to allow you to fit it to different front objectives of scopes, because they're all different. Um, you look at the sizes on the website and you'll see what's required and then you just fit it to every multiple different scopes so what is the beauty of this system so once you've got your shim fit to the front of your scope what you do is you tighten this down when it's in the tightening position fit it to the scope centralize it tighten it down and then just enough so when you let go you can release it and it comes off and then also there's a little screw at the side you tighten that down and it'll stop when you're taking it on and off it'll stop it becoming loose this screw and it'll keep the tension of what you've used on so <clears throat> i'll show you briefly and i haven't had it fitted to this scope but i'm just going to show you so basically all you do put your shim on this right pop that on as so flick your switch your lever over should i say and that is it fitted on the scope it is depending on what shooting style you're doing if you're sitting in a car, which is awkward, it can be difficult to reach the focus mechanism. If you're standing up or you're shooting off a bonnet or sticks or any other way, you can access it no problem. It's just certain positions, like they say, in a vehicle, it could be awkward. Um, so you could. the beauty of this system is there's a couple of points. You can fit this. You can have multiple different rifle setups, and you can use this on all of them. You can swap between scopes. Um convert stock and set style setups with say Swarovski, Smith and Bender scopes, non-parallax adjustable. You don't need to have a parallax adjustable scope. That just goes on the front. Straight away you've got a fox and rabbit vermin rifle from your stock and setup. Or you can, you know, just convert anything to put on an air gun, shoot stuff if you want to. So it's really good for having one unit that'll cover all your different rifle setups. Um and you can swap it between them. The other thing is um you're using your scope's own magnification, your scope's own reticle. So, compared to dedicated units, when you double the mag, you lower the resolution and you sort of pixelate the image a little bit. With this, the image, the eye display on it is really high resolution compared to other products in these ranges. It allows you to zoom in on the Krypton um, up to about, well, I even got the full mag range, like 14, but I wouldn't probably go no higher than 9, which is ample enough. Um, I was using it on a three by uh, three base mag scope, and it was fine. I wouldn't use it on too high base mag scope, just 
the lower the better really like a, a one and a half would be amazing two great three perfect but i wouldn't start going to five and six and using it on one of them my own opinion personally because <clears throat> you just limit some of the corners of the the menu system and that and like i say the menu on this is circular um so all the menu functions are uh, are there straight in the center of the screen to use it so it's a good unit it's different a dedicated unit um image i'm impressed with it compared to what i thought it would have been i didn't think it would have been as good as it is but it is good a couple of little niggles like i say it's a bit depending on your position getting the focus can be a little bit awkward and when you're looking through the rear of your scope on a normal day scope if it's too close your eye as normal without nothing fitted you can sometimes not get a good image of the reticle or the image of through the scope if it's too far away you can so like everything on a scope you've got to have your head in the right position away from the scope to view through it that's two of the little small tiny gripes other than that it's a really good image and you can use it on the likes of uh second fo focal plane scope i don't like first focal planes at all but second focal plane if you're using it on something with a loopage trajectory like an air gun rim fire, what you can do is you can just change your magnification of your scope to calibrate your reticle to your own drop so you know your own drop points and you use your own reticle system and you just use your front mounted. So I was shooting rabbits at 150 yards on five and a half mag with a rim fire, dropping them with this sat on the front of it, no problem whatsoever. Our range finds obviously with a range finder set up on a night. Um but it just shows you can use your reticle drop instead of relying on digital systems or digital reticles or what you stuck with a certain manufacturer. You've got your own reticle and then you use a front mounted add-on. So another thing, <coughs> I think I did say it's available in two models, XG and FXG. One supplied with this by default, which is a front mounted monocular, uh, sorry, um, the rear mounted monocular for one of the models it comes with that. And uh, the other model is, it doesn't come with the PSP, it just comes with the unit itself. Other than that, they're, they're both identical. So this, if you look, some little notches in there, right? And this, it's got its own diopter adjustment and it's got its own lanyard attachment there, right? So these are about £100. If you look in there, you probably can't see, it's like sort of recessed where this lip will sit in there. So you, if you just turn it round, anti-clockwise type of thing there you'll feel it drop in then you give it half a turn and you hear a click and that's it locked in you don't have to take this adapter off at all um so basically that's a spotter now you have that set to your focus you can clip a single point harness on there and have it as a spotting unit i probably wouldn't use it like that but a lot of people like that appeal if they've got a friend out with them they want to spot and use one of these if they're doing whatever um that's the option. So if you want to remove it, it's solid. Half a turn, not even half a turn, quarter of a turn, clicks off. Right, and then you're straight back on your scope again. Like take the lever, put the shim on your scope, put it on, close it, back on your scope. What I did find was I used this on the rim fire and I was using it about 50 yards. Checked me scope, 50 yards, and it was bang on the target. I fitted this unit, it was slightly low. It wouldn't matter for big targets like foxes, rabbits, uh, well, foxes and whatever you're going to shoot. And if you're shooting boar stuff at mad ranges. Um, but I was shooting rabbits, like I say, 80, 100 yards prior to me range finding them on another occasion with this. <coughs> and um, I didn't have no issue. But when I checked on a target, like I say, at 50 yards and I fitted this unit, it was about a centimetre low slightly about five mil right of the target um so what i had to do was because each setup's totally different i had to, you keep this button at the back pressed in i think it's this one at the back and for 10 seconds and you'll enter, enter a menu function that will allow you to calibrate this unit to your actual scope so all you do is aiming at the target still where your bullet, if it's slightly off, say like a centimetre to the left or right, you basically just move, keep on target, and move the cross to that point where your bullet actually did go, and it calibrates it. Once you've done that, you just take it up, pop it on and off as normal, and you're good to go, and you don't have to touch it again. <clears throat> so that is the option if that is slightly out, and it needs slightly tuning or calibrating to your gun setup. Other than that, that is the Krypton. Nice packaging, nice box. Um... 
Pump supplied in the carry case. And that's the little bits of features you get with it, all the different ring adapter mount. I'm not going to sugarcoat all this like some people do and spin a yard and start talking all, you know, squeaky voiced and all that and tell you it's amazing and tell you I'm a, a night vision gimp. It's just what it is. So, yeah, anyone who's got one of these who you may know of, go and have a look at one, try it before you buy it as... Always, you're better off looking and seeing if it's what you need it to be for your unit. But they are very popular, and there's a lot of people interested in them. Like I say, I was impressed with it more so than I thought it would be. Um, and definitely, you can shoot foxes 250, 300 yards easily. Um, and rabbits, like I say, I was shooting 150 yards with a rim fire with a range like range finder. Um, so it's more than capable. From air guns right up to centre fire. That's the pulsar crippling anyway. Nice little unit. Quite a high price tag, like 3999, but it is what it is. There you go. The crippling.